Ah, hello everyone. Well, welcome to the very first uh, first video of Mystery March 2021. And today we're going to start off a look at Season 2 of Veronica Mars with Normal is the Watchword. So, let's take a look at it. One day before senior year, Veronica is working at a job at a restaurant. Soon, a boy named Kelvin comes into the restaurant and says that he failed his drug test, even though he has been clean for 10 months. Veronica sees an interview with her father, Keith, on TV and it is revealed that he wrote a book about the Lily Kane case. Okay then, wonder why he would do that. The episode then flashes back to the romantic cliffhanger at the end of season one, and it is revealed that Logan was at the door. Yeah, I kind of figured that. Logan reveals that the biker gang beat him up after he kicked Weevil in the face. Although he woke up with the knife and found one of the gang, mem found one of the gang members was stabbed, Logan tells Veronica that he, that he did not stab the gang member, and Veronica believes him. However, Leo comes and arrests Logan. Wallace says that he and Meg also failed their drug test. Wallace informs Veronica about the details of the drug test, and the episode flashes back to show the details of Veronica and Logan starting to date over the summer. Aww. Veronica talks to all the students who were framed in the drug test, and they all say some people might want to harm them. Veronica has become estranged from Meg, and Veronica reveals that Logan was released from prison soon after he was arrested. That's good. Veronica connects the five people who framed to an incident where a student was publicly harassed in gym class. Keith is dating Alicia Fennell. Okay then. Veronica and Wallace spend the night investigating students, and Veronica eventually deduces that Wallace ingested a small amount of an illegal substance, most likely in a gift basket earlier that year. Huh. In a flashback, Veronica and Logan make out in the car until the PCH bikers shoot out the car's windows. Veronica it, conducts a drug test on Wallace and finds that he's clean, which rules out the possibility that, it food, that his food was spiked. Hmm. Veronica asks Keith for help in finding out the names of the company's shareholders and discovers that the parents of the second string athletes who have been promoted to starting positions as a result of the failed drug test, are all shareholders in the trading company. Aha. Uh -huh. Veronica believes that one of the lab assistants was paid off to forge the results. The previous summer, Logan was involved with an arson crime. Logan still based with Dick and Beef for poolside, and they Google of the brother's stepmother, Kendall Casablancas. Veronica sets up the parents and has Principal Clemens listen in, and is revealed that Duncan is now dating Veronica. Huh. In a flashback, Veronica breaks up with Logan. When Logan starts to get angry, Keith barges in and makes him leave. Logan is carrying on a relationship with Kendall. Ugh. On a field trip, Veronica meets Gia. Dick arranges a limo ride for the O-Niners, but Veronica make decline and take the school bus. During the ride home, Veronica talks to Meg one more time, but she's still passive-aggressive. Veronica explains to the audience that she and Duncan are dating. At a rest stop, Veronica sees Weevil and they debate about the stabbed gang member. Meanwhile, Veronica's bus drives away without her. Hmm. Instead, Weevil takes Veronica on his motorcycle before they run into before they run across the limo with Duncan Gia and the other O Niners in it. They tell Veronica that the bus full that the that the field trip bus full of students drove off the cliff and into the sea, and they look over the crashed bus. Oof, yeah, that's definitely not good. So anyway, let's look at the production of this episode. When it was renewed for a second season, Veronica Mars became the lowest rated show network history to be renewed and the only UPN drama from the 2004-2005 television season to be renewed. Starting in the second season, Veronica Mars has moved to Wednesday nights, placing it, placing it in direct competition with ABC's popular Lost. Rob Thomas said that, quote, I wish the juggernaut that is lost wasn't a direct competition. At the same time, Veronica Mars is placed after UPN's America's Next Top Model. On the date of the, of the airing of this episode, Bell and Thomas talked to the New York Times, where Thomas commented, We let Veronica say things that, if you got all day to think about it, would be the perfect retort. The episode was, was originally titled, You're in, Tru You're in Trouble, a joking pun on your in trouble. The episode's title refers to a phrase said by both Veronica and Wallace, indicating that things are supposedly normal, though they are not. 
The episode was written by series creator Rob Thomas, directed by John T. Crutchmer. This episode marks Thomas's fourth writing credit for the series and Crutchmer's fourth directing credit for the series. Excuse me. In the episode, Logan mentions that producers wanted Tara Reid to play Trina Eccles in casting for the film adaptation of the Eccles story. During casting of the role of Trina, Reed was actually almost cast in the part. In the episode, Logan makes him seen hand gesture known as the Shocker, something that the UPN censors didn't, did not notice. Before the filming of Normal's The Watchword, Rob Thomas informed actor Teddy Dunn, who played Duncan Kane, that he was planning to remove the character from the show. Dunn said that he was not too upset by the news, as he almost did not return for the season at all. On his role this season, Dunn said, quote, And so I knew going in that I had a finite amount of episodes, so it was like any other job. I went on my merry way. The episode features a brief cameo by Julie Chen, wife of European executive Leslie Moonviv. Leslie Moonviv's. If that's how it's pronounced, I'm sorry if I butchered that. The cast members did not know important plot information before they received the script for the episode, including who was at Veronica's door and that Veronica and Duncan would resume dating. Ashes by Embrace plays during the bus, cra bus crash scene. And now, finally, on to casting. Normal is the watchword introduces several new characters and series regulars to the show. On casting the new season, Thomas explained that he conceived the show as a one-year mystery and decided that he needed to introduce and eliminate several characters to be able to create an equally fascinating mystery for the series' second season. Thomas felt that he would not bring back the Canes and the Eccles and have them and have them all involved in a new mystery. He needed new blood. With the opening credits, three new actors are given star billing. Two of these actors, Ryan Hansen as Dick Casablancas and Kyle Gollner as Cassidy Beaver Casablancas, served as recurring characters in the show's first season. In addition, this episode marks the first credit of Jackie Cook, played by Tessa Thompson, despite the fact that she does not appear in the episode. Several important recurring characters of the show's second season are also introduced in, normal in, in, in Normalist Watchword. Kendall Casablancas, portrayed by Charisma Carpenter, best known for her role as Cordelia Chase on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel, makes her first appearance in the episode. During casting, Heather Graham was considered for the role. However, Graham was filming Emily's Reasons Why Not. Carpenter said that she wanted to play the role because the name is really spectacular. The episode also introduces the character of Gia Goodman, played by Kristen Ritter, who later becomes known for her roles in Breaking Bad, Don't Trust to Be in Apartment 23, and, my personal favorite, Jessica Jones. Ritter would reprise her role in the film continuation of Veronica Mars and called her role in the series her first big acting job. Ritter was a fan of Veronica Mars before her role in the show, and she unsuccessfully auditioned for a guest role in the first season. However, the producers enjoyed Ritter's performance, so they told her that she would be on the show at some point. Hmm, interesting. So overall, this is a very good start to the second season, and well, let's just say it can only go up from here. <laughs> but anyway, tune in tomorrow as we take a look at where this is at the second episode of season two, Driver Ed. So until next, so until next time. So yeah, sorry. So until tomorrow, so I'll see you. Sorry, trying to find a good way to end this video. Anyway, so thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow.